What we're going to be ministering tonight is virtually unknown in the Christian world. We're talking about the, the new covenant is the means through which men are made righteous. That, now that's the point I'm going to establish. Actually, if you can see this text that was read tonight, Hebrews 13, 20 to 21, is an overview of righteousness. This is an overview of what it means to be righteous. Now the God of peace was brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make, 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 make you perfect. We're not talking about unseen perfection of the soul. That's not what we're talking about here. Make you perfect Amen. in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That, now that's what we're talking about when we talk about being made righteous. This is not theoretical. And it is almost always presented that way to anyone that has knowledge enough to even deal with the subject about being made righteous. Almost always is dealt with as though it was theoretical. Yeah. Imputed righteousness is real righteousness. Amen. Amen. It's not God treating you as though you were righteous. That's right. That's what we're going to be touching on tonight. See, with God, the issue with men is whether or not they're righteous. That's the issue. And the person who doesn't do righteousness is not righteous. Amen. Everybody's got to really see this now. Maybe convicting, but we'll let it be convicting because John said, we, we, you know that he that does, does, doeth righteousness is righteous. Yes. The person who doesn't do righteousness is not righteous. Yeah. Do you begin to see the criticality of this statement? Yeah. There are all kind of religious systems that teach people to live with and try and manage sin. Yeah. There are a dime a dozen. Yeah. They're all over the place. Yeah. If you look it up on the infamous, if you infam do the infamous Google on this, yeah, yeah. you'll find that there are thousands and thousands of people and programs trying to teach people how to manage sin. But right. sin can't be managed. Amen. Amen. That's right. If it could be managed, the law would have worked. Yes. Amen. You have to be made something else. We have the scriptures scripture plain on this now. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 is just one of the statements. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. I don't care what they've been taught or where they go to church or what they think. They're not going to go to the kingdom of God. Yes, that's right. Now, I know God. God wouldn't say that. If there wasn't some way to make people righteous, yeah. to make them righteous, yeah. to make them righteous. Right. Yes. And he, Romans 5.19 says that, uses that exact phraseology. Through one man, many, mm -hmm. that's the, the ones that sinned, which actually was all, but mm -hmm. it's many in comparison to one, see? Yeah. One man got us in this shape. Yeah, that's right, yes. Through one man, many were made uh, made sinners. That's, That's right. what Romans 5.19 says. Uh -huh. One man... Yes. I know people argue about what they call total depravity. Yeah. If we could just get rid yeah. of people that don't know what they're talking about, yeah. we would have made a tremendous contribution Amen. to the people of God because there's a religious system a foot in the world that allows for people that don't understand these things to teach God's people. Uh -huh. yeah. 
they fit right in. We were made sinners by Adam's sin. The doctrine of Romans 5.19 is the same way one man made us righteous and the righteousness is just as real as the sinnerhood was. Now here's a breakdown of righteousness from a covenantal viewpoint. And you'll see that the work of the new covenant is an inward work. Because if a person is not inwardly righteous, they're not righteous. And they won't do righteousness. So Romans 8, 10 through 12 tells us that God would put his law into our minds and write them on our hearts. All right, that's a state. He's describing righteousness to you, which means you'd think in sync with the law of God. But rather than by default thinking unlike God, by default you think like God when you've been justified. And by written on your heart means this is how your, your feeling, your love, your delight is in the law of God. By choice and by practicality, God becomes your God. It's not that you ought to trust God. You do trust God. We're talking about what it means to be righteous here. God sees you as his people. He doesn't pretend like you're his people or treat you like you're his people even though you really aren't. These people who are righteous really know God. They have an acquaintance with him. They don't feel ill at ease in his presence. They have this driving compulsion to bring things to him and to enter into his presence with joy and to come with supplications to the throne of all grace. And God is merciful to their unrighteousnesses. He doesn't hold them against them. He finds a way to free them yes. from them. And he remembers their sins no more. So when, you, when, this, when you're made righteous, I understand that as we, we talked about, discussed some of this this morning, that there's a remnant of the old you in you. Yeah, right. It's there. Nobody who is close to God wants it to be there. Uh -huh. yeah. yes, amen. But it's there. Some of what you were yeah. uh -huh. is still in your, it's in your body. Mm -hmm. It's severed from you. Yeah. That's right. He's, yeah. The circumcision of Christ separated it from you. Yeah. It's an enemy in the house, but it's there. That's right. Why is it there? That's how God's going to prove yes. that you are really new. Amen. Even though the thing that once dominated you, there's a remnant of it that remains in the old man. There's a remnant of it that remains in the flesh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't dominate you. Amen. That proves. Yes. If, it, if, if sin does dominate you, you can't prove you were born again. That's right. That's right. It's not up to me to say you weren't. Uh -huh. I won't do it. Mm -hmm. But when someone says they're in Christ... They got to prove this. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you don't do it here, you'll come under examination there. Yes. It's got to be done. So I'm, for, I'm, I'm saying these things to show you we have a good reason to be thanks, yes. to give thanks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be thankful that God has made us righteous. Amen. Now, let me emphasize this once again, that righteousness, like God is righteous, mm -hmm. like Jesus was righteous. Yeah. We're not talking about an idea here. Uh -huh. We're not talking about a philosophy or a certain way of looking at mm -hmm. a subject. Men, righteousness is a critical matter. That's what I want to establish. Isaiah first said this, it wasn't, it wasn't accomplished in his day. Let the unrighteous man forsake his ways and thoughts. It's Isaiah 55, 7. This is God talking. 
That is, don't let, these things are not to dominate you. And every person that commits sin, don't you dare say it was just an external habit. Sin overcame him. He didn't abandon his sin. Let the unrighteous man forsake his ways and thoughts. Now, I'm, what I'm preaching here tonight is that God's made a way for this to happen. To really happen. Yes. I understand that a lot of folk would lose their jobs if people did this. I understand that. But they ought to lose their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. People are trying to have people overcome sin by other than being made righteous are out of sync with God. And you can't dignify that. Yeah, right. God's made a way to change. Don't you dare come up with some methodology Amen. for people to change. Amen. Well, I know if I, I probably sound emotional, but that's because I am about this subject. Let's say that a person, let's say that a person managed to clean their life up and they weren't outwardly doing this or that. What do you say to someone like that? I can tell you right straight from the Lord's mouth what he said. Accept your righteousness. Exceed that of the Pharisees, yep. who can in no wise enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. That's the kind of lives they led. Mm -hmm. yeah. Their lives are spotless, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. but inwardly they're full of dead men's bones. Yeah. 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 Mm. Behavioral correction. Now, behavior that's deviant does have to be corrected. I, I understand that. But behavioral correction all focus on bodily expression. Trying to get people, teach people, lead people to not do what they feel a compulsion to do. Or what I'm saying is God has addressed this matter in entirely another way. Peter, one time when it the Lord told him to go to the household of Cornelius. This is about at least 10 years after Pentecost. At Pentecost, he preached by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the promise of the Spirit was given to those that were afar off as Gentiles. He, in, a, in a sense, he knew this, but it, it hadn't registered yet. And so God taught him this, and when he got to Cornelius' house, he said to Cornelius in Acts 10, 35, God showed me that in every nation, the person who works mm -hmm. righteousness is accepted. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's quite, a, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's quite a phrase, let me tell you. That's what he told him. Now, this situation is foretold by Isaiah the prophet, he foretold about a righteousness that would be superimposed on the person. It would not be a righteousness that they themselves developed. Isaiah foretold this. Isaiah 45, 24. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall all men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. I have righteousness. In the Lord, I have righteousness. See? Here, is a, here it is stated a little differently. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Saith the Lord. See, there it is again. Uh, these prophets didn't grasp this because it wasn't intended for them. Uh -huh. yeah. Their righteousness is of me. And God doesn't give fake That's right. righteousness. Yeah. Surely everyone, uh, everyone knows that. Amen. In fact, the scepter of Christ's kingdom is righteousness. Yes. God said to the Son, the scepter of thy kingdom is a righteous scepter. Uh -huh. yeah. 
That's the righteousness of your kingdom. You want your prayers answered? You got to be righteous. Amen. He said, "What about if you're coming to Christ for the first time? Well, God's got to first get rid of your sin, which He will do. Which He will do. And then, without if if your sin is blotted out, that's that's the thing that makes you righteous. And if it's blotted out, it can't come back on you. It doesn't splash back on you. That's right." The evidence of your acceptance yeah. is your righteousness. Now, it's, it's not up to any one of us to seek to determine whether someone other than us is accepted by God. We can't, yeah. you can't look at somebody else and, and determine with a degree of finality they're either in or out. You, this is not for you to determine. You will see things that will be evidence of God's people, and you delight in it. But the, but the last assessment is going to be God's, God. not ours. So we're not talking here. We're not talking here about us examining some other person to determine whether they're righteous or not. What I'm telling you is what is the base, why a person is righteous, how they become righteous. That's what I'm. Well, that's what I'm talking about. And a person has to examine themselves and think through this thing. Now, my, my subject is that the new covenant is the means by which men are made righteous. That covenant is going to be traced back to Abraham. The new covenant is traced back to Abraham. Now, in my uh, younger years, I knew, I knew the Bible taught this, but I, I didn't see it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see that the covenant, the new covenant, is actually the oldest covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. The law was added. That's right. See? Amen. Was added because of transgression. That's right. So the, the new covenant is traced back in the embryo, and in its initial announcement is traced back to Abraham. Now, Peter, he preached this early on, Acts 3.25. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant, and of the covenant God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all kindred of the earth be blessed. That's the, that's the bottom line of the covenant. That, see, that's the summation of the covenant. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's the, that's the blessing that he, was, that he was talking about. The covenant of blessing was turning your iniquities away from you, which is what righteousness is. That is the state from which proper conduct flows. When this actually takes place, and God knows when it does, when it actually takes place, the person commences to do righteousness. Amen. Now let's let's let Paul. He, Paul has some teaching about this. This is a a little extended, but I do want to I do want to read this from Romans four, the first thirteen verses, because this now this was written quite a few years after Pentecost. But this is a very difficult thing for the early, even the early church to get hold of about how people were made righteous. Romans 4, 1 to 13. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is found as pertaining, to, what Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh is found? Well, what did Abraham have that we need to see? For if Abraham were justified by works, he have worth the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it, that faith, was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if the thing that makes you, that makes you righteous uh -huh. is what you do, then God owes it to you yeah, uh -huh. yeah. to call you righteous. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Yeah. That is your faith, which is real. Faith is yeah, real. Amen. Your faith yeah. 
That's what God constitutes your righteousness. Yes. Amen. And your faith will determine what you do Amen. and what you say and where you go and how you live. But your faith, that's the thing that constitutes your righteousness. Even as David also described with the blessedness of the man under whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who did that work? Yeah. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not yeah. impute sin. Mm -hmm. Come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or are the Jews the only one that have this? Or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, as long as you're in the body, in the flesh, in the world, there has to be some other basis uh -huh. for your righteousness than what you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because your doing is not perfect. Mm -hmm. How then was it reckoned? When he was in circumcision? All right, so that's one thing he, that's one thing he did. He was circum circumcised, circumcised his household. Was he made righteous? When he was circumcised or when he wasn't circumcised? Hmm? He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness that he had, being yet uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Even though a person that comes to Christ, as John the Baptist taught, and as Jesus confirmed, even the person that comes to Jesus Christ has to clean up their outward act. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. When they come, they have to clean up their outward act. But you can't keep your conduct clean. You can't keep it clean, see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be soiled before you know it. You can't keep it clean, but you've got to come that way. Why? Why do you have to come that way? That proves you're serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, a person who insists that he can't quit the outward expression of sin isn't serious. Because yeah. uh -huh. I will tell you Amen. that if a person who's the lowest down sinner there ever was, uh -huh. if on their way to Jesus they quit doing the things they were doing, God will enable them, yes. that he will enable them to be victorious in that. But they will have to cut, that just is to come. Mm -hmm. Then he will give them the means to maintain that. I don't think this is taught very well at all. Mm -hmm. Historically, it hadn't been taught very well. I didn't teach it very well back when I was younger. But if this could be seen, it would change how people are converted. Yeah. Amen. The change takes place after you've changed the, the outward expression. Yes. Now, that may seem difficult to receive, but that, that's what repent means. That's what repent means. Amen. Change. That's what it means. Amen. Turn around, stop going that way. That's yeah. what it that's means. Right. Yeah. Then God empowers the person to maintain that status. Mm -hmm. Now the impact of imputed righteousness. It was imputed to him for his faith. He believed God, who said, your, your offspring are going to be as multitudinous as the stars of heaven and the sands of the sea. You couldn't prove this to anybody. If Abraham went out to somebody and said, look, and they said, here he is. He's somewhere between 70 and 80 years old, and, he, and he's impotent, and Sarah's barren, and he says, you know, I'm going to have seed as numerous as the stars of heaven and the sand of the seashore. There'd be anybody believe him. He couldn't prove that. Yeah. The only way he could prove it is to yield to God. Yeah. And then God would prove it. Yeah. See, you, you, you may tell people, look, if you're in Christ, you'll be able to resist the devil. You'll be able to find a way of escape from every temptation. You'll be able to do righteousness. And this may seem like far-fetched to the person. Like, how can this thing be? Well, if you come in, you, God will teach you how this can be. Yes. This is very real. Amen. 
Once Paul came to Christ, he never, ever persecuted another believer. He didn't slip up, you know, and say, whoop, whoop, I, I killed a couple last week. I wish I had. He didn't. It stopped abruptly. Yes, His sin abruptly was terminated. Why? Because when he came to Christ, he knew what he was. Mm -hmm. And when he came, Christ cleaned him up yes. and gave him righteousness, made him righteous. <laughs> So that right out of the chute, he goes down to the synagogue and he's preaching that Jesus was the Christ. Yeah. Then people marvel, this is the one he was trying to destroy the people who followed him. See, it all happened. Mm -hmm. Rapidly it happened. Yeah. We're showing now that imputed righteousness is real righteousness. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's see how, if he was counted righteous, how did this affect Abraham? Mm -hmm. Romans 4.18 Against hope he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which is spoken, so shall I seed be. And being not weak in faith, mm -hmm. he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. How was he able to do that? Because he was made righteous. That's how he was able to do that. Uh, that is a uh, marvelous situation. Let's, let's take it a little further. Now, once my, my point is that once he's made righteous, this, here's the impact it had upon Abraham, who didn't have the resources you have now. Yeah, uh -huh. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called, mm -hmm. when, when he was called, right. to go out into a place which he would after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. How, how did he? Mm -hmm. he some people, it takes them a long time. Yeah. When they first hear a summons from God, it takes them a long time before they respond. didn't take Abraham a long time. How about this one, Hebrews 11, 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, when, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. <coughs> See, well, he didn't actually offer up Isaac. So far as his intentions were, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. he did. And God didn't stop it right. till a knife was poised and ready to That's be thrust right, yes. into Isaac. Yeah, How's that for timing? Yeah. You don't want to be slow of response right, yeah. under those conditions. Mm -hmm. yeah. The angel st stayed his hand. Yeah. The angel said, now I know. What, the, the angel speaking for himself. God knew That's what was right, going to happen. He yes. uh -huh. says, now, now I know. Yeah. So he said that what God told me was I see. You you got the real thing, Abraham. Mm -hmm. See, I'm showing you is that his faith compelled him. This is what faith this is what faith does in a person. Yeah, amen. Amen. Jesus said of Abraham, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Mm -hmm. I don't pretend to know everything that's involved in that saying. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot. Abraham rejoiced to see my day on the basis of a rather sparse promise. There weren't a lot of promises issued to Abraham about coming Messiah. They were, they were pretty vague. Mm -hmm. Through your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I think he made that about three times. He said that to Abraham. Stretched over a period of 25 years. But it was enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was enough. He rejoiced to see Christ dead. He saw it and was glad. Now Paul develops this idea of the covenant and it connects it with what, what the covenant was intended to do. My message is the covenant is the means through which men are made righteous. In Galatians, the third chapter, 
Paul speaks about this covenant. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be of a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereunto. That is what he's saying is even with men, if they make an agreement, they stick to it. Now to Abram and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So what he's going to tell him is that just like Adam represented the whole race, yes. Jesus represents all the redeemed. That's right. Mm -hmm. For this I say that the covenant mm -hmm. is one was made with Abraham, mm -hmm. that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, so the covenant was made with Christ before the law and even before Abraham. Which is, and the law, which is 430 years after this encounter with Abraham, uh -huh. did not disannul it. It should, not, it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by, by promise. <clears throat> so Abraham didn't actually see Jesus out when he was on earth. He didn't actually experience it while he was on earth. Uh -huh. But the fact that God told him he was going to do this was enough for Abraham. Yeah. He changed his life and altered the way he lived and obeyed God in view of that promise that he never saw fulfilled. Isaac never saw it fulfilled. Jacob never saw it fulfilled. Joseph never saw it fulfilled. And several generations and hundreds of years of Israelites never saw it fulfilled, but they all lived in the strength of that promise. Yeah, right. uh -huh. Amen. Now, Paul goes further in this uh, in this. Uh, third chapter of Galatians, and he says that the seed <coughs> was Christ. Mm -hmm. And to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith not to seeds as of many, but as one which is Christ. <coughs> we're talking about one person that's uh -huh. going to be the basis that's right. for righteousness, and that a person believing Christ w will be made righteous on the basis of Christ yeah, and his faith in Christ. Yeah. Galatians 3.21 Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. If there had been a law given that could have given life, verily righteousness would have come been by the law. So if a, if a person can be made righteous by what he does then, uh, then God would have given a law uh -huh. Uh -huh. that would have, would have done that. He'd have given a, another law. Instead, uh -huh. of giving, yeah. instead of giving Christ and redemption, he'd have given another law. Uh -huh. If it was possible, yeah. he'd not bind you. There are people teach it is possible. Yeah. There are people teach this is possible. Uh -huh. And they make a lot of money doing it. Uh -huh. That it is possible for you to alter your conduct by a regimented means and that you will reap a different character and a different destiny because you did. Mm -hmm. Of course, the heathens have taught this too for yeah. centuries. But this is not true. If that was a true statement, then man would not have had to write a procedure. Uh -huh. God would have given one. So if you can be procedurally yeah. made clean, uh -huh. God God would have written the procedure yeah. that did that. That's, right. That's yeah. what he's saying. Uh -huh. But the fact that he didn't do that means man has wasted his time doing it. Yeah. That's right. You can't change people uh -huh. by regulation. Yeah. Amen. It's got to be by recreation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wherefore, Paul concludes the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The law then tutored us. I told God is saying, see, I told you you couldn't do it. Because when I say don't do this and do do that, I don't mean try and not do this and try and do yeah. that. Uh -huh. God isn't saying do the best you can at this. Mm, yeah. Your conduct had to be flawless. Amen. You were not allowed to make a mistake. You just weren't. That's right. Amen. Yeah. I can see it had to be that way because you could never have convinced men uh -huh. of the nature of salvation if it hadn't been proved to them they couldn't. That's right. Yeah. Yes. 
they couldn't make themselves acceptable to God. You may make yourself acceptable to humanity. Uh -huh. I'll concede that. Yeah. You may be willing to make yourself acceptable to humanity by self-discipline, but you will not make yourself acceptable to God that way. Then in a, a, a quite a phenomenal statement in Galatians 3.29, he's already told you that Christ is Abraham's seed, right? Mm -hmm. Galatians 3.29, if ye be Christ, mm. then are you yeah. Abraham's seed. Glory to God. Let yeah. me just boast a little bit in that. Yeah. If ye be Christ, you yeah. are Abraham's seed. Yeah. Amen. You've been made one with Christ, and what was promised Christ is yours. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And heirs according to the promise. Technically, the new covenant was made with Christ. Uh -huh. You go down and do what needs to be done, son. Lay down your life, an offering for sin, take it up again, come back to sit at my right hand, and on the basis of that, I'll make the person righteous who believes what you did. Yes, That's the way it works. Yeah. And then all these promises that were made concerning Christ, they become yours. Yeah. You are Abraham's seed. Well, and we're called children of Abraham. That's another way of saying Abraham's seed. Yeah. Now let's look at this another way. <clears throat> Being made righteous equates to the new birth. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's another way of saying made righteous. <laughs> 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of incorruptible seed, but of corruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. When you're born again, you're not born flawed. Mm -hmm. You're not born guilty. Mm -hmm. You're not born again alienated. Mm -hmm. You're not born again enemies in your mind by wicked works. That's what you were, but that's not what you are, and you're born again. Amen. See, righteous, being made righteous is just a... It's another side of looking at being born again and being justified, or newness of life. Romans 6, 4, we're buried with him by baptism into death. Not we weren't buried because we were dead. That's not why you were buried. You were buried into Christ's death. Yeah. Why? Because that's the only death from which God will raise people. Yes, amen. He yes. won't raise you from death and trespasses and sins. Uh -huh. yes. Got to see this now. It's a, it's a bit technical, but you got to see it. He will raise you because you've been joined to Christ's death. You were baptized into yes. Christ's yes. death because from that death, God could raise you. Yes, amen. Sit together with Christ in heavenly places. This is the picture of liberty. Being made righteous, being, being born again, being justified from all things, mm -hmm. this is what makes a person free. Yes, amen. Free from dominion of sin, free from uh, the devil, free from principalities and powers. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us uh -huh. free. So you are made righteous, you are made free. Mm -hmm. You can say no. Yes, to our godliness and worldly lusts. Yes. You can say yes to living soberly, righteously, and God in his present evil world. Mm -hmm. When he says, look for Christ, you can say, I will look for yes, Christ. Amen. See that? Yes. To be justified, to be made righteous, this is the result of yes. that. This is what happens. Praise God. Well, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, mm -hmm. but when we've come to Christ, we're not under the schoolmaster anymore. Yes. For we're all children of God by faith in Christ. Yeah. Being made righteous is not just a way God views you. Uh -huh. yes. This is said of Abraham, Romans 4, 17. 
As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calleth those things that be not as though they were. Doesn't mean he really wasn't righteous, but God called him righteous. It means he promised that people would be made righteous and blessed even before he did it. That's right, yes. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Amen. Romans 5.19, made righteous now. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Mm -hmm. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And the righteousness is just as certain and real as the sinnerhood. Yes, amen. Romans 6.22, being now made free from sin mm -hmm. and become servants to God. See, there's a real, this is a very real yes. Transaction, you have your fruit under holiness and the end of everlasting life. So you, there was a real change yeah. that happened when you were made righteous, a real moral and spiritual change yeah. took place. It affected how you thought. Uh -huh. It affected how you acted. Mm -hmm. It affected how you reasoned. Yes. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, Second Corinthians 5.21 says, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Was Jesus really made sin? <clears throat> yeah. yes. You were really made righteous. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You got to see yes. this? Yeah. Amen. If you weren't really made righteous, I think I would could safely say Jesus would never have submitted to really be made sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Why was Jesus made really made really made sin? Because sin had to be punished. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And if it's in you and it's punished, yeah. you will not survive. Mm. Yeah. They took the sin in the aggregate, the iniquities of us all, he laid it on Christ, and then he judged. He, see, because God's righteous, he has to judge yeah. sin. Amen. He cannot ignore sin. His nature will not let him ignore sin. That's why he purposed a, a, a savior. That's why he purposed a savior. Amen. He would take the responsibility uh -huh. for all the sin of the world. God would judge it yes. and curse Jesus, as Galatians 3.13 says. Uh -huh. But Jesus could come back from the curse. Right. Amen. And we couldn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, <laughs> that is so good. So we're made free from the law because we're made free from sin. See? Uh -huh. The law is made for, for the, the lawless, the disobedient. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. But when you're made righteous, you are not lawless and disobedient. Uh -huh. You're made righteous. Uh -huh. So now you're the, the law can't, can't condemn you. Because uh -huh. actually, you, you died. Yes. We're dead to the law. That's the yeah. statement of Scripture. We're dead to the law, and the law can't do anything with a dead man. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't make any pronounce about, against a dead man. Uh -huh. Isn't God wise? Yeah, he amen. made a way for you really to die to sin. Yes, amen. Mm. And then in the, he, made, he made you righteous. Mm -hmm. He left behind the remnant of your old nature. Uh -huh. So you could learn how to fight and prepare and resist. And <laughs> yes. But all the while, you've got to keep with your mind, I've been made accepted in the beloved. Yes. Amen. That's Ephesians 1.6. I can come to the throne of all grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help at the time of need. Because you've been made righteous. When a righteous man comes to God, God doesn't say, sorry, I... I can't deal with you. A righteous man is accepted by God. And he made you. He made you. Yes. Righteous. So Abraham was made a father of many nations. Uh -huh. Romans 4.17. Adam, because Adam, we were made sinners. Romans 5.19. Because of Christ, we're made righteous. Romans 5.19. Uh -huh. We're made 
See, I mean, it's accident in here the created work of God. We have made free from sin, Romans 6, 18 and 22. We're made free from the law, Romans 8, 2. We're made the righteousness of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We're made accepted, Ephesians 1, 6. We're made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6. See, that's imputed righteousness, but it's real righteousness. And it's a covenant reality. This is the kind of covenant we have, that the covenant that was made with Abraham, I will bless. See, that was the covenant. I will bless. The law came along, and it proved we needed to be blessed. <laughs> we needed to be blessed. Then Jesus come along, and he, he allowed, his presence allowed God to judge sin so it could once and for all be put away. He depowered sin. When, when God judged sin in Jesus and cursed him, sin lost its power. The only way sin could have power over you is for you to be deceived about it. That's the only way. Sin has lost its power. And the covenant, the new covenant, is the means by which you're made yes. righteous. Amen. It tells you what you're going to be, mm -hmm. how you're going to think, yes. how you're going to see God. Me, all of that really happens. And mm -hmm. as Fanny Crosby said in that famous song, "Oh, the children of the King yeah. have a right yeah. to shout and sing." Yes. For the way is growing bright, yeah. and our souls are on the wing. Yes, amen. We're going by and by to the palace of the king. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, there, and I believe, has our exhortation.